Hello, my loves, and welcome back to the Hottie Life YouTube channel. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Jessica Alexandria. Welcome. And for those of you who are old friends and family, welcome back. As you guys can see by the title of today's video, we are going to be leaning into the lessons that it is that we have learned and any additional messages of support or encouragement or words of wisdom that we can receive right now from our ancestors, from our guides. So these are the three piles that I have available for you to choose from. The first one is lithium quartz. The second is amber. And the third is rhodonite, which I'm going to call the watermelon radish crystal because <laughs> that's what it reminds me of all right so go ahead and get your water i have mine here go ahead and get your tamagotchi <laughs> i have mine here or get some tea get cozy and let's go ahead and dive right in okay moonbeam it is your reading time if you chose the lithium quartz, this is the lesson, the major lesson that is that you have learned and any type of advice that your angels, your guides, your ancestors wish to give to you now, especially words of encouragement. So the first card is tobacco connected to controversy and paradox. Interesting. I'm going to pull all the oracle cards out and then I'm going to shuffle. Solitude. Listening. Mm, okay, already I'm getting a message here for you. And then your tarot cards are Page of Swords, Five of Wands, the Devil card, and Seven of Swords reversed. First things first, um, intuitively what it is that I'm sensing is some, you have learned, okay, let me take a step back. There have been too many situations in your life where it feels like the truth was forced down your throat or a belief or some type of perspective or opinion was forced down your throat. Like you were almost meant to accept them accept something i almost said thump um and i it's interesting because i i'm getting like a lot of forceful energy so this feels like something or someone is forcing their will over you or forcing you to believe a certain thing forcing you to listen to them to take their feelings into consideration um i i'm <clears throat> i'm hearing the word restriction and I even feel like as I'm talking, I feel like my, I feel like I want to like cough and kind of expel something. What you have learned for the most part, for what, it, what it is that I'm getting is you have learned your truth. You have learned to accept your truth. I think that for a long time, this is what, in what I'm intuitively sensing first. I think that for a long time, you might have been someone or was, were, was raised to be someone or you just accepted someone's perspective, someone's reality and someone's opinion or someone's narrative as your own. You may have gone along with the flow of a lot of things and then it got to the point in your life where you realized I am over I'm over compromising for the sake of the peace and you're, you're immediately starting to reject it. I think that there are some beliefs, maybe from childhood, that were kind of projected onto you and may have created unhealthy mindsets and belief patterns that you might have held on to. You have learned that that did not belong, that it didn't belong to you. It, you're rejecting it. It's interesting that you have the listening card here and solitude and then controversy and paradox. It's there's something about someone else's truth, someone else's reality, something else. Maybe it could be the way society wants you to be, what society 
deems as success, what you, what society thinks a healthy relationship should look like or who you should love or who you should be. You were listening to it, you might have internalized it, and then all of a sudden you rejected it. All of a sudden you had a come a, a, a coming into yourself and a, a huge shift in your awareness, a huge take back of your power. And now you are leaning more into your own authentic, authenticity. Now, and it, the other thing too, is I want to tell you, and that this, I, I'm interested in hearing what your ancestors, your angels and your guys have to tell you. But what I want to tell you is, um, this is something that I want you to I really want to tell you this. I want you to take your time in developing this new truth for yourself. And I really feel that with the solitude card showing up for you. Take your time with this new truth, with this new awareness, with this new reshaping of your identity or this new lease on life that is that you have. There's going to be a lot of questions. I'm getting, a, a, I'm hearing and I'm feeling um, a lot of questions that is that you're going to be asking about this truth or about this new perspective. If this is something like, okay, I only know to be this way, I only know, to, this could be someone who's been a relationship person their whole life, and then all of a sudden they are like, I don't even, I don't even know if I like relationships. I don't even, like, um, I don't know why I wanna say this, but even like sexuality, like where you, your preferences, like what you're attracted to, who you're attracted to, you might start to question, what, am, I, am I actually attracted to these type of people? Am I actually attracted to this? Or is this something that I was told? Was my brain shaped into this? Was, are my thoughts shaped into this? If this is parenting, this is a way that you feel like you have to be as a parent and you're questioning that, you're challenging that. If this is um, a career, do I want to be a nurse? Or am I rejecting this? Am I rejecting, uh, am I rejecting this concept? Why, where did this thought come from? Page of Swords, the Devil card. Where did this thought come from? Who offered that to me? Why was that one of the, why was that one of the options? There's a huge question here about now kind of listening in on your own inner voice and how many things that you might have been doing now are maybe the complete opposite of what you feel like you should be doing. And the major lesson that I feel like you've learned again in this, in this life right now so far, or in this season in your life so far, has a lot to do with integrity, but also before integrity, awareness. Because I feel that for many people, you might have been just going with the motions. You might have been doing showing up in the way that is expected of you, showing up in the way that you have learned. And you might be starting to see things from a totally different lens and perspective. And that becomes the truth. You start to really, and it's interesting because I almost feel like you're going to pass this on to others, this awareness. Like, why do we accept this? Like, why did you, when you did this, why did you accept that? Could you maybe consider that there is a different way? There's this big questioning, almost like rebellion spirit, but it's not. It's, it's very, it's very like quiet. It's almost like a quiet rebellion or a quiet acceptance or a, a a quiet inner revelation. I I feel um, your lesson, your major lesson that I'm picking up on is that not everything is what it seems. Not you don't have to accept everything, and there's there's your there's there's more than one way to do things or there's more than one thing that you can be. There's more than, there's not just one thing that you have to accomplish. You can just also, for some of you or someone here, you can start over at any point. Uh, you can start over at any time. Now, and I'm hearing, now would be a wonderful time for you to start over. Now is a wonderful time to you for you to, refi to refine yourself, to rediscover yourself. It's interesting because I'm almost seeing someone cooking. Like maybe they went to, school to be a mathematician and they just always had a passion and just completely excelled in like being like cooking and then all of a sudden they like start a business and just sell their stuff like sell their 
their food that, that they're creating and then they go to chef school after they've achieved success in a restaurant. Like it's almost like things go backwards, but it's the way that it's supposed to be. And there's a calling over your life. There's a super, a supreme calling over your life. And you're, you're starting to become more aware of that. And you're starting to ask more questions or you have. And when you started doing research, when you started asking questions, more information started to being provided for you. And you started realizing, listen, the way that I've lived or the way that I've done things so far is not, there's more, there's more, there's more to this. I feel a message about not accepting advice from people right now. Wow. The cards to jump up out for you when it comes to messages from your ancestors and guides as far as wisdom that they can help you. Um, first things first, I'm with the Three of Wands and the Knight of Wands. This is about... You've already, yeah, you want to make sure that you're not taking in um, a muddling, like muddling of your, of your, of opinions, right? So think about, make, okay, whew, how do I say this? So if the same people who never thought or never allowed you to consider or they never, the, they themselves never consider that there's a different way for you to do things, they should not be the same people that you're going to to ask for advice, to ask for insight, to ask for confirmation, affirmation, for even support. If you get the support, if that's great. But I would not go looking for them for that advice because they didn't even have it in them. No offense to them, but they didn't have it in them to consider. It kind of reminds me, well, story time. Way, 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 way back in the day, when I was really diving super deep into astrology, I went to an astrologer who I respected and she made a career. Um, well, she made somewhat of a career. She published a book on astrology and she read my chart. She's accomplished enough, right, in her work, but she read my chart and she told me um, she was like, you, you, you have your Pisces is ruling your midhaven. So the chances of you being an astrologer or intuitive, a tarot reader and incorporating that into your work is going to be very, it's going to show up like it's going to be present, but you can't make a living out of that. And I remember as soon as she said that, I was like, I felt so sorry for her, even in my young age. I had to have been, I definitely was under 20. I had to have been under 19, so I was probably like 17, 18. And I, as soon as she said that, I felt so sorry for her because I'm like, damn, she just told me her reality. She told me what she wouldn't be able to accomplish, not what I would be able to accomplish. And I knew it strong in my spirit. And granted, did I think that I was ever going to do anything like that? No, like I'm doing today? Absolutely not. But I knew in my, I knew from a sense in my spirit, probably because I spend so much time listening to the divine and spending time in solitude that I didn't, I wasn't quick to absorb or accept other people's realities, limitations, hopes, high hopes for me, that my hopes, my dreams, my challenges were all going to be divinely inspired within my life. That's where my challenges and my, my great sense of accomplishment was gonna come from, not from human concepts. I always had that sense because I had already felt the presence of the divine moving in my life. And I felt purpose and that kept me going through even some of the more, di more most difficult moments of my life. So I say this to say that, you know, it's, we can listen to the world and ask for the, the wisest people or the most knowledgeable people what they think and what can happen. But at the end of the day, we're human beings and we don't want to be defined or limited by human logic. Divine intervention, a higher power, a higher calling will always defy the odds. It will always defeat the obstacles. And if you are more open to that, you won't muddle your energy with the voices and the nuances of like outside energy that can't understand 
where it is that you're going. So with the Seven of Cups and the Three of Wands and the Knight of Wands showing up, there's some things that you want to, I don't want to say keep to yourself, but there's some visions that are best you moving on without asking for clarity, confirmation, advice from others who are not equipped to give you that wisdom. All right, so that is your reading. <laughs> Let me go ahead and read to you your Lithium Quartz message. Um, before, while I'm finding the page for this, I want to tell you that the apothecary is soon to be reopened. That's actually why I have this big bowl of sage pieces here because I use it in one of my energy cleansing mists. And I will be making that later today while it's raining and the perfect day for an energy cleanse mist. Okay. Becoming still calms the activity in our heads and puts us back in touch with our bodies, our spirits, and the universe. Lithium cord spirit appears with a reminder to get quiet and recognize that you have within you all that you need. You just need to amplify some of the qualities you can bring, oh, that can bring you a sense of joy and fulfillment by giving them quiet, calm attention. Do you see that? You have listening and then you have solitude here. Overstimulation can be distracting, so refresh yourself with some time spent in or around nature or nature's creatures, whether it's a furry warm animal or a pond with fish swimming happily. Retrain your senses to recognize that all is well when you are tuned into the rhythms of the earth and aware of the interconnectedness, the water and sky, yourself and the ground beneath your feet, the breeze and the birds flying from tree to tree. Turn your face to the sun, recognizing that just as you drink in its rays, you are always drinking in the pure joy and love available to you from the conscious universe. Today is a day for experiencing peacefulness, harmony, and happiness. I love that for you. Love, love, love. So thank you, my love, for allowing me to read your energy, although through the collective. It's always an honor. It's always a blessing. If you wish to receive any of my magic with intention, oils, candles, herbs, highest quality on the internet, you can sign up for my newsletter at bahadilife.com. That newsletter will alert you when the apothecary is reopened for the exclusive shopping, which means that you can shop without being hindered by things being sold out and without um, the tumbling in of the outside world who might see a notification on Instagram come run through and kind of wipe out, sell out this, the apothecary. I've learned over years that it's best to give my loyal customers quality prime shopping and shipping time. And the rest of the world is there and I so appreciate those who are really ready to work with me and my magic and my intention setting. Do know that everything I do is always authentic, moving with integrity, and it takes time. It is a ritual. I don't take shortcuts. It does take time. It can take very much time, depending if you're having like a custom oil, custom fixed candle. There are always um, pre-created things from, for example, like love candles, love oils, money, oils and candles, etc., etc. those best sellers. I do create them in larger amounts than, of course, like a custom, but they sell out very quickly. And I wrap and pack and ship them all by hand in a world that is dominated by Amazon and robots. I just really am never compromising on that. So uh, the links for that will be down below. I welcome every single one of you to explore and browse at your leisure. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me at info at Bahati Life. Me or my assistant, Amina, will help you. And anything else that you would need information for will also be found down below from the Amazon storefront to Sacred Circle Tarot School, tarot cards I'm using, what teas I'm currently drinking, and other wondering, wonderment <laughs> things that it is that I'm offering, services that it is that I'm offering, okay? Until then, my loves, 
Thank you so much. Please definitely give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye. All right, my loves, if you chose the amber, this is your message. What lessons have you learned or are you currently learning right now? And what is the wisdom, words of encouragement that can come directly from your ancestors, your angels, and your guides in this moment, this season in your life. So I'm gonna flip over the oracle cards first and then I will shuffle for those additional messages from your angels, guides, and ancestors for wisdom, etc. Mm, okay, we have angel trumpet, suspicion, and turmoil. We have golden palace. We have Calmness. You have Eight of Wands reversed, Eight of Swords reversed, Six of Cups reversed, Nine of Swords upright, and I'm sorry, Ace of Swords was upright. I don't know if you're sensing this, but I am. I'm seeing a lot of anxiety, a lot of internal uh, tumultuous water you are learning or have learning or have learned um, that for some of you guys, you might have actually learned that there's a problem. You know, there, there's a problem with um, the root. There's, a, there's something here that is triggering you. You have learned that and you're starting to create um, healing there. So that's number one. This has a, this could have a lot to do with the past. This could have a lot to do with childhood. This has a lot to do with memories, subconscious, PTSD, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Maybe genetics, DNA. And you're you've worked, you've realized that this is not all in your head. That this is something that it's in your best interest to ask for help. Others of you, you have learned to protect your energy, that there are some things still regardless, like regardless, there's some things that are creating tumultuous energy within you. Some people might've been projecting their anxiety, their reality onto you. And I don't see how that is going to be healthy for your mind. And then definitely not for your overall well-being. Some of you guys are realizing that some parts of your life and your journey have been very turbulent and you are starting to become more aware of the actual impact that it is that it had on you and you are slowing everything down. I can relate to that big time. I'm also seeing that there's some connections in your life, friendships, partnerships, parent child relationships, working situations that you have learned to disconnect from because either, either you separating from them, you creating boundaries with them, you moving away from them in your life because they do more harm than good the closer that they get to you. That has been really difficult. There could be a lot of, there could have been a lot of gaslighting. This is also giving like narcissistic um, relationships and the type of people that narcissists tend to attract and they feed off of the attention. They feed off of that energy of the person who they can gaslight and take advantage of. There's a lot of inner turmoil. Actually, you know what I just heard? I heard self-restraint. Whoever, if this, if this is you, you have used, you have learned, you have had, you've held a lot of self-restraint in situations that could have been, I don't say abusive to you, but could have been not kind to you. I'm going to call it for what it is. Maybe actually I'm going to use the word abusive. If it's not something that is helpful, kind, and is destructive to you, to me, that's going to be abuse. I'm just going to call it what it is. I don't like sugarcoating shit. I don't. I really don't. I feel some of you guys, I'm sorry, I, I don't wanna, I'm, I'm, I didn't realize that this reading was gonna be this, so I'm gonna be, put a big old trigger. But I am hearing certain things, I don't feel comfortable saying them on the internet right now, especially not YouTube, 
for a multitude of reasons. This is not the platform for it, but I also don't want to trigger anybody. There's specific things that are coming up here that I'm hearing clearly, loud, loud, loud. You know what they are. Um, but they've created a lot of, um, they, they're best handled in realms where people are equipped to help you heal. And I nurture that. <laughs> like I hold that close, you know, I, pr I don't know you, I protect you in that. <laughs> this is me putting you in my little egg carton of my life and being like, hey, this is off limits. She, he, they is someone that is precious to me and I wanna water them and nurture them, you know, so. Some of you guys, I'm so proud of you. I'm hearing this. Um, so proud of you because you really separated or are currently separating from energies that have really kept you, interestingly enough, are suspicious of you and your intention. But I think it's because they're watching you become more empowered. Have you noticed that? Like someone who is an abuser or someone who is benefiting from a relationship, when they see that you're doing well or that they see you starting to get healthy, all of a sudden it becomes a problem for them. Or all of a sudden they try to control it or cut you out or do whatever, fine. Whatever is for your highest and greatest good in the situation, whatever brings you peace and healing and calmness and health is what I want for you. And hopefully that's what you want for yourself. I think that you learned that. You've learned who is who deserves to be in your palace and who needs to be on the outskirts, who needs to be crossed, canceled, and deleted out of your life. Some of you might have learned that there might have been, um, it's interesting, I hate to say this, but some of you guys might have been, you like have bad like energy towards you, people try to freeze you or stop you from progressing it could be like actual spell work or it could be things that they're saying things that they're saying to other people things that they think in their head this is where you have learned to protect your energy and guard your energy in fact that is a major lesson that i feel like you're learning right now is to protect yourself a little further than you already have you're i feel like your innocence or fragility or vulnerability has has been or could have been taken advantage of um, I also don't want to say this to make it sound like gaslighting, but if, if anything, it's actually calling out a truth here. It, there's like, you have a lot of protection from your angels and guides. So the situation could have been worse, whatever this is, whether it have been cheating on scandal, abuse of all different varying ranges, there's a lot of protection that's around you. And some of this tumultuous energy that is that you're sensing from nightmares to anxiety is the fact that you are intuitively sensing danger or you were or how it could have it could tip your oh, okay i just want to start talking to your answers your ancestors and your guides when it comes to this and then i want to lean into this golden palace message because it's really standing out to me yeah five of cups this could this situation i don't this is it's interesting because the five of cups is is the card of what they say like don't cry over spilled milk this is to me gives like gaslighting or just blowing over your pain your suffering it, this is almost like someone doing something to hurt you laughing about it and then being like why are you upset strength card yeah that's so funny because i well not funny but i keep hearing the word um self-restraint i feel like the more that you have held back from calling out um something that was a disservice to you something that was mean something that was i just heard someone was equipped to hurt you or harm you maybe they had like power over you maybe they had I don't know i don't know why i'm hearing like a popularity contest like maybe it's like this is almost like holy shit whoa i just got a specific message so maybe this just applies directly to someone but think about back in the day right there was this situation that was happening a lot on the internet where big businesses like urban outfitters were seeing like small time artists who were highly talented and taking their artwork and taking their creations putting it on t-shirts and selling it and they would never ask for permission. They were really abusing these small creators and their gifts and their talents, and they would never give credit where credit was due. It was their popularity and their and their magnitude, like the sheer volume of that industry that crushed 
someone who was ill-equipped to protect themselves and all they were doing was sharing their artwork so that they could make $15 off of a print that they sold on Etsy a month. You know, it's just really violating. And that's kind of the energy that as I'm getting here, I'm almost seeing the same thing with like someone who's like quote unquote like popular, using their popularity to hurt or harm. And their intention is not, like this is someone whose intention is actually to take advantage of. You know, and then when you talk about it, they're like, well, it's not that serious or you're crying over spilled milk. Like do, for some of you guys, you're realizing with the self-restraint, it's not, you're, you're, if you're going on, um, this can be a tough message here. If you're going to that person to get compassion from them and you really want that compassion, I want you to know that you are going to hurt yourself because you're trying to get validation from a place that will not give it to you. So you have to choose to see the situation for what it is. Maybe it's not that this person is maliciously trying to hurt you or harm you, but they're not equipped or they, or whatever the case is. But you can't go to them and say, I mean, you could, I don't wanna tell you what to do, but this is what I'm getting, you know, as I'm looking at these cards. You can't go to them and say, listen, if you want to, you can. Not everyone's situation is going to be the same. But, and I don't want to trigger anyone. And if this is not your story, then this, don't take this message. Take it, discard it, right? But for someone here, you have to kind of have a little bit of self-awareness here too. That if you go back to the spot that you feel like is hurting you and you're expecting an apology or compensation or consideration or compassion, you are in it's almost like you're finding validation when in fact you should be finding freedom instead of trying to get them to admit fault because everybody has their own story now certain degrees of abuse like serious abuse should not ever be tolerated and having a boundary and separation and distinct distinction is so important and i i feel really weird saying this on youtube because i already know someone's gonna misunderstand what it is that i'm saying right now and want to fight me on this and i just don't want to fight <laughs> I just hope that you guys get where it is that I'm coming from with this. Um, but again, we live in a, a day and age where um, it's just tough to talk, you know. But anyway, that rightfully so, you know, tis the season. I'm an astrologer, so I pull the charts. I know. I'm empowered by it, but I won't succumb to it. Anyway, um, looking at these cards, though, if you find that you are looking for an apology hopefully you do get it of course and now maybe you get a full explanation and maybe you get healing from that i just don't know if i would expect it sometimes it's best to protect your peace to find clarity to see the distinction the, the, the distinction ace of swords i teach this in sacred circle tarot school ace of swords is the card of harsh truths and realities it doesn't bring in emotions so sometimes it's if you're the victim here in a situation, a story, it's hard for you to see that other person's side. Definitely so if they're gloating about it. They may have their side, their story. Hopefully they're not malicious assholes, but there's definitely those people out there. There there might be two sides to the story and you have, you know, your situation. So, but again, everyone thing, everyone's situation is different. Your angels and your guides, their, their wisdom to you is to find, do not find yourself in places. Yeah. You have the king of pentacles. You are equipped to move yourself. Wow. So you have the mission, magician card here and the ten of pentacles and the devil card. Right. It's interesting because the magician card was reversed. I had to flip it upright and the ten of pentacles it was reversed and I had to flip that upright. These are cards that could empower you. Wow. And then now you have the queen of swords. These are cards that do empower you. They should empower you, but you have to first decide to empower yourself. And again, everyone's situation is going to be different here, but make sure that you're empowering yourself. When the Ten of Pentacles shows up reversed or upright, we're talking about legacies, um, generational curses, things that are passed on for us, things that, okay, this is my drama, this is my baggage, this is my burden, I'm passing on to you. Whether or not you're, look, you have um, Six of Swords here and the Knight of Pentacles reversed. Whether or not you are accepting that, sometimes when we try to not be like someone, we end up becoming the extreme opposite of that version. So we want to kind of find healing and balance. Ace of Swords showing up is, is giving you the opportunity, right? Your angels and your guides, their wisdom to you is to give you, is to connect you with the right people to arm you with knowledge and awareness in this situation. 
so that you can be more empowered versus you trying to figure this out on your own because the foundation of your mind needs to be more solid and not restricted by the trauma. And chances are it's trauma from the past. And I'm just, I'm going to leave it at that. I hope I didn't trigger anyone too aggressively here. You guys know my, my channel be telling truth over here. Just sometimes get a little deep with our healing. Okay. Amber card. Whew. Oh my gosh, guys. <laughs> Look. Uh, Amber, healing family patterns, releasing karma, preserving the wisdom gained by the lessons of the past that i feel so supported because sometimes guys let me just can i just interject myself in here this is bff just real just just at target with you right just at trader joe's just at walmart just at the park with her dogs no tarot cards no astrology charts not even her phone on her no makeup sweatpants socks and sandals yes socks and sandals that just so sometimes when i come on here right i'm like ugh. <laughs> why? <laughs> why do I have to be the one who comes in um, and just always has to go deep? That's just how I am. I was also born on the autumn equinox, so I can look at the shadow and the light and learn to balance that. I master it here in this life, you know? And I use that in my altar work. I use that in my magic. I use it in my petitions. I use it in my work for myself, for my clients, my family, my friends. And sometimes I come on here and I'm just like, everyone gets to talk about like unicorns and rainbows. And I could, I could, I could. And I do try every once in a while. I sprinkle it in there. But the predominant side of me is very concerned and wants to heal, nourish, deep-rooted things um, so that we can have better outcomes here, you know? Um so it's kind of a relief right now. I'm saying all this to say that it's kind of a relief to see how this card just showed up and supported exactly what it is that I said. Because sometimes, even though I don't need the validation, it's nice, it's helpful, it's constructive, it's encouraging <sighs> when and as it shows up. And I get you guys' emails all the time on your revelations, your generous your generosity like you just pouring back into me after i say some very difficult things here on this channel and i just want to say i love you like thank you i love you i love that and it always surprises me i've been doing this for over eight years and it always catches me like oh wow thank you like thank you so i know if anything on my heart i'm harder on myself than anybody else believe me um but yeah, and maybe one of you guys needed to hear that. I just wanted to share that from BFF Jess with her socks and her sandals. Okay, moving forward. <laughs> no, but for real though. <laughs> Love you guys. Okay. Okay, the family. Also, I, I can, not that I can relate to this. I would have to journal about this a little further before I can find the place where I can completely, completely, completely relate and put myself in this situation, but I try to not do that. Um, But I get it. Looking at all this, I get it. Okay. The families we come into as infants and the ones we grow up in offer us experiences that yield gifts, lessons about love, about resilience and forgiveness, and about our own power to leave behind old ways and embrace the new. Our current families do this too. By exploring our relationships with family members, we can discover our own strength and wisdom. Amber Spirit is here with a message to reconnect with the wounded story you still recount, one that is a legacy of your family. Can you heal this story and instead tell one from the perspective of love? How beautiful it is to alchemically change the experience of family. This doesn't necessarily have to be family, it could be work, it could be relationships, it could be how you treat yourself, etc. cetera. The, the experience you had at the grocery store, <laughs> This way, you may receive and give love within a family as defined by the heart and the magic of the universe who, spends, who sends people your way to make sure you have the caring and affection you need and deserve. Friends can be new family. I also want to say that this is when these cards or when I'm telling you move from a higher space of love, that doesn't mean that you get to tolerate or that you should have to tolerate any forms of abuse here. Okay, I also want to be very clear that if you have been abused or if there's been something here that has not been kind to you you can definitely hope for 
sorry, like speak your truth and hope for an apology and some corrected behavior, but don't stay in a space for the sake of looking for that apology or confirmation or validation. Move out of it. Quick. Okay. Reflect today on the love you have created for yourself and how precious you are, a gem like no other. Reflect on the family surrounding you, the guides and, manif and manifestations of the universe here to support you and send you love, love, and then some more love. Look to those who choose to offer you this gift, for they are your human and animal family. Draw strength from knowing that love shows up always to bring you what was missing in your own family in the past. This balm is available for you to heal the family wound that has hurt for too long. So this is a this to me feels like too finding places of love where you didn't receive it. If you have been cheated on, abused, um, taken advantage of, lied to, stolen from, not everybody has that intention, and you are empowered now to go find those to go find those people who are your people who would never do that to you and pour into you in the way that it is that you deserve, but they are equipped to give. All right, my loves, I. I'm sending you my love. Thank you so much for being here. The Apothecary will be reopening the newsletter to sign up for the update of that will be listed down below. Any other links that you need can also be found there from tarot cards and oracle cards that, is that I'm using from the oils and candles that it is that I highly recommend. From Bahati Love Notes, the Sacred Circle Tarot School, all that in between. Until then, please feel this, give this video a thumbs up. It does help my channel and subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you in my next one bye all right my loves if you chose rhodonite or the watermelon radish <laughs> this is your reading what lessons have you learned or are you currently learning and what advice or wisdom from your angels guides and ancestors can you receive right now as well as words of encouragement I'm going to flip the oracle cards over first. We have Star Jasmine, Spiritual Gifts and Abundance. We have Doubt. We have a Morning Dove outside of the window singing. We have Self Love. I really like this energy already. It's giving me life. Oh, we have Come Together. Five of Pentacles, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Empress, Seven of Cups, Ten of Cups. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the lesson here is in your capacity to make this world a better place, you have to make sure that you yourself are a beautiful place. And you are a beautiful place, but do you feel that? Mm, 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 mm. Girl, give me a hug. Come here. I'm going to give you a hug right here. <laughs> uh, I don't know why. I just got an image of like, this is so weird. Well, I feel like you guys will understand. I just got an image of like all of us just out here as just cats sitting in the window, <laughs> sitting in our own, our own individual collective windows, just kind of flicking our tails and looking out from the distance. And just kind of like mutually kind of supporting each other without taking each other in. I don't know why that's the message that's coming through, but it feels really significant. I feel like at the more that I sit with this, because I want to like ask my angels and guides, like what, 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 why that message? Um, I think it has to do with boundaries. I think that it has to do with our own independent individual journeys. And maybe this has a lot to do with our spiritual gifts. That is that we are all called here individually to give, to serve, but not... With the cat is so symbol symbolic though because it's not going to ever sacrifice itself if it takes a risk it's because it wants to take a risk it's not it's not going to put itself in any type of danger and there's always going to be boundaries with cats and i just feel that yes be a person who brings light and joy and radiates positivity and leaves a lasting impression and someone who is contributing to the overall healing of our earth but don't lose yourself in that i think some of you guys have given so much of yourselves um in so many different places not just in your work although sometimes when we see spiritual gifts we think okay i need to find my purpose i need to find my tribe i need to find the collective i need to 
make money doing you know the work that it is that is helpful and healing to other people because I want to continue to do this sometimes in the pursuit of that we lose ourselves regardless of our success regardless of our accomplishments are you being nourished nurtured supported what you have learned in this season in your life or what you are learning is that it's so important that you take care of yourself you can't continue or you shouldn't or you're encouraged not to overgive, overextend to the point where you yourself are empty. It's also important that you have boundaries or you will, in your giving, you will become lost. You'll begin to doubt yourself. You will not be able to see the impression that is that you leave on others. You will not be able to see the joy that you bring to others. You won't be able to see the healing because you yourself aren't healed. You you were maybe healed or were healing, but in that process, you, it can be, I just want to say that it can be very damaging. It can be very destructive. It can corrode not your gifts, but make you lose the capacity to take care of your spiritual gifts so that you can continue to offer them. But before you think about giving to others right now, I want to tell you to give to the divine. Before you think about giving to others, give to the divine first. Go to the divine, go to your angels and your guides, go to your ancestors through your rituals and begin to continue to spiritually pour into yourself. This is gonna give you a whole lot of clarity. Also, someone here needs to do a cleansing. Jasmine is so interesting. It's actually used for attracting, but I'm seeing this as a, a spiritual bath, including Florida water and um, essences, which is interesting because I, I'm actually gonna start working on that. That's what this is some herbs here that I'm going to be using. Um, yeah, so I, I'm definitely seeing a spiritual bath to, to clear out, to cleanse out from the crown chakra specifically. To clear the, the crown chakra and to attract, um, to attract sweetness, to attract not just protection, but also sweetness and to help nourish and support the crown chakra. Hmm. Wow. Sorry. I was just kind of like receiving a download. Oh, um, yeah. Some of you have learned a long time ago and you have been putting this into practice that, that, that quote of the wound is the place where the light enters. You have put that into practice, but you might have drawn too much light to the wounded space for the it, uh, for the sole purpose of helping other people that it's time for you to not go into darkness, but it's time for you to go in a, to stop shining a light so much on that wounded space and to allow it to rest. It's almost like a person who is like a zoo. Like, I don't know how to describe this. Like, let's say... Let's say you become popular because you have you have incredible trauma and you've healed it and then you're helping others who are healing from like like-minded or similar situations. It's almost like people are crowding in to see you say this story again and again and the same story is huge and impactful and meaningful but it's lost its meaning to you, the person who lived it, the person who tells that story. It's almost like routine has maybe I don't want to say lost its magic but it's lost its sparkle and you want to close the curtain on it for a little bit and that's okay when I'm seeing this message here about come together I see this definitely for more intimate connections and relationships in your life we'll talk about that in a minute but I more importantly see this again as you coming together with the divine, with you coming together with your higher self and starting to prioritize nurturing, nourishing, cleansing, comforting that space so that it is thriving more. Now, I want to talk to you about relationships. There have been sometimes, because we have even five of pentacles, ten of cups here. This is lack and abundance. So you might have had people around you that benefited off of you, profited off of you, but may not have had your best interests. Their intentions might have been muddled or your intentions for them might have been muddled. And there's a question about who 
and what is holding space in your life, who deserves access to you? Because I, I'm almost getting a sense that there's someone here or maybe this is loneliness. Some of you guys might have been so strong on your spiritual journey that you don't feel connected to others. It's hard for you to make friends. It's hard for you to connect. And I just, I don't know why I just wanna tell you that's okay. That's actually a common thing. That's a common experience. Let's shuffle about that. Five of Cups, Ten of Pentacles. Mm, yeah, I just I just heard that in every generation, there's always like a, a, a pod, like a little score of people. I don't know if that's the right way to say it, um, of people who just don't fit in. Even in the 70s when everyone was like drinking and smoking, maybe not drinking, but like on one, <laughs> just vibing and free sex for all. I just feel, I ne you never think about that one person who might have been um, like, I don't want to have sex with everyone. <laughs> I don't want to do drugs at the disco. <laughs> but you think as a collective, they're all like, yeah, no, man, everything's, everything's fine, man. Like, <laughs> I'm sure there's a small pocket of, 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 of people who are s scattered all about who are just like, everyone's loving each other and I just don't want to be touched. <laughs> and they had like incredible wisdom and they just d probably didn't really connect with others and everyone's just like, yeah, free love, man. And you're just like, sure. But you're on, you're under the influence of something and this is dangerous and, <laughs> and like this is gonna have repercussions of all this free love, there's gonna be repercussions and we should not be, it's good to be, I, I like you understand, that person understands the purpose of this society, the role in society that they're living through but can see future, spiritually downloaded, like warning signs and <laughs> intuition saying, listen, we are not going to regret, regret this later but let's try to do this a bit more balanced so that we're not also simultaneously hurting ourselves through the healing. <sighs> you might be that person here today. You might be that person who the whole world could be like, I'm a tarot reader, I'm an astrologer, I read astrology, I do horoscope, I do, I actually can relate to this message a lot. Where it's like, do I want to continue to show up on YouTube when everyone kind of seems to be mirroring each other and then I just feel like this quiet voice that's just kind of going my own way, kind of doing things in the same stream, I guess, of what others are doing, because I've been doing this my whole life, but making sure that I'm feeling good in my integrity. And I know that sounds really crazy, but sometimes, not that you will ever compromise your integrity, but sometimes it can get a little five of pentacles, you know, or empress reverses. I'm probably not saying that correctly, but I feel like you get me. And it's interesting because looking at these cards, putting, pulling myself out of the equation and going back to these cards, the doubt card and self-love, you might be doubting yourself. You might be needing to give yourself a little bit more love, nourishment, support, and loving yourself further honoring yourself further, regardless of your spiritual journey, regardless of your spiritual status, regardless of your abundance or lack of abundance or lack of spiritual gifts, you have to give yourself love and kindness and grace and support. I also want to acknowledge, and I'm going to insert myself in this, as a spiritual teacher and as a person, an intuitive, a gifted human being, the pedestal that people put you on, that they place you on, and expect you to master at all times or this vision that they wish for you to be is not your reality but theirs. That's their perception of you. And make sure that there's boundaries so that you're not absorbing other people's expectations and that you are continuing to move with authenticity and integrity, even if that means that you are the only one 
and you may be disappointing people or there may be lack or it may have some quote unquote punishment, the spiritual pureness of a person who moves with integrity is worth it always in the end and in the present. Ace of Wands, your words of encouragement from your ancestors and your guides is the word renewal. Renewal, fresh starts. Now, the card that I pulled for you is Ron, Rondite. Ron, <laughs> give me a moment. <laughs> Rodonite. Okay, cool. I think I got it. AKA what I like to call it the watermelon radish. I haven't pulled the rose quartz crystal card in a long time. Random thoughts with Jess. Okay. Harmony in relationships. Easily connecting with others. Wow coming together. Generosity, reciprocity, discovering hidden talents to share with others. Relationships help us to reach our destiny and discover our purpose. And people will come into our lives to be our angels on earth, offering love, encouragement, and resources for building the lives we want for ourselves. Now is a time to reconnect to others in a spirit of generosity. For Rodonite Spirit is here to help you form healthy partnerships that benefit everyone. Allies can be invisible or come in at unexpected guises, so keep your eyes open. Listen to that little voice inside, nudging you to reach out and extend a hand to someone you feel a connection to. This person might have invaluable ideas or solutions to offer you, or be the inspiration that helps you to find the courage to move into unfamiliar territory and express gifts you may not have known you had. The universe works through people, so think about connecting today, if not to an old friend or someone you love, then to someone you've been too shy to approach. Heal the belief that you should do it all yourself. We're in this together. We are meant to work in partnership, exchanging our gifts to better the whole world. So if you are a spiritual person right now, a spiritual leader, a spiritual guru, a spiritual student, a spiritual advocate, there's a huge message here about going about partnership, connection, asking for help, and going the journey together, not exclusively going it alone. Hmm, listen to this. Prosperity message. Remember that healer you meant to check out? Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. That advisor you said you wanted to contact? Hmm. <laughs> This crystal has come to say that now's the time to reach out. Connect with someone who can help you mend what has become frayed or even broken so that you can ensure your prosperity will flow again. Perhaps it's time you explored some of your hidden talents and revealed them. You are called now to be fearless and generous. Abundant help is available to you and there is much more you can do to experience wealth. Take a class, learn from an, an expert in an area where you feel unsure, and soon you will see that you are rich in resources. People will show up with plenty to give, time, money, guidance, whatever it is that you need. Prosperity is your natural state, and in working with others in a partnership right now, you'll find it is easier to believe that and manifest whatever it is that you value. Hmm. Okay, wait, I gotta read this one to you, sorry. All of us have gifts to share and a deep longing to be needed. So open up to a partnership that allows both of you to give and receive. Now's the time for you to reach out and take what is freely offered and to recognize the continual flow of reciprocity between you and the people in your life. If you're feeling too enmeshed with someone and wondering where you end and that person begins, spend a little time connecting with this crystal to reestablish healthy yet fluid boundaries that allow a balance between you and the people that you care about. 
when you are generous yet aware of your worth, giving with a healthy self, sense of self, you attract those who respond in kind. So this is about making sure that you have healthy boundaries, big time, big time, big time, big time. Giving and receiving, reciprocity, equality, permission, self-nurturing too, making sure that you're not overextending, overgiving. It definitely for my spiritual, those who are spiritually gifted, okay? All right, my loves. Thank you so much for allowing me to shuffle pull for you to read your energy, even through the collective. If this reading was helpful to you, please, before you go, give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Any type of links to work with me from mostly the apothecary, because my readings are closed for now, outside of Bahati Love Notes, which is the exclusive service that it is that I shuffle and do private readings, um, not individual, but for a small group there, um, that all will be linked down below from Sacred Circle Tarot School and all that in between. Until then, you guys, I'm seriously sending you all of my love. I do hope that you are well, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.